Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. Today we are going to be using another fantastic tumbler charm from Cami Page Boutique. This time we are going to be using the gift box tumbler charm and turning it into this adorable cow print gift. Everything you see listed here will be covered in today's tutorial, but as always, if you guys have questions, please feel free to reach out to me or ask down below in the comments. Before we get started on this tutorial, make sure that you hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Also, make sure you check the description where I list all items you will need to recreate this tutorial, as well as discount codes from my favorite suppliers. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, y'all, so here is the gift box. I went ahead and spray painted it with a copper spray paint. I used Lucky Penny from Color Shot. And here is a 20 ounce tumbler, and I'm just showing you guys how it is going to fit on once we get everything completed. I always like to spray paint them first. They come in different colors. Some are gray, some are pink, but I like to give a good base coat I guess. I typically spray paint them white and then add color but since this one was going to be shades of brown I just did it with a copper. So I'm also going to get some acrylic paint. I'm just getting some black and some brown. I am basically just distressing the ribbon at this point. The box itself is going to be covered with cow print foil. So I am just going in all of the little cracks and crevices and just kind of distressing those areas. And I'm not getting a whole lot of paint on my brush. We're just using a little bit of paint. You can always go back and add more if you want to. So I'm just adding, basically like outlining the ribbon is what we're doing. and then just kind of blending in those colors into the present. And I'm doing the same thing to the ribbon. And I'm not really too concerned if the paint gets on the actual present because we are going to be covering it with foil. And now I'm going in with some dark brown and I'm basically going to do the same thing. So we're just adding more dimension, more texture. I always like to add more texture than I think that I will need because once we epoxy, it's going to smooth everything out. So again, we're basically just going back over the same parts. I'm not being as heavy handed as I was with the black. We're just using these for little accents. So next I'm going to apply my foil adhesive. I like to use the foil adhesive from Artistic Painting Studio. If you have never used foil adhesive or foils, it is basically like tack it over and over. You're going to apply a thin layer to the surface that you want to foil. Let it dry completely. You know it will be dry if it turns clear. And then we will be applying our foils. And you want to do pretty thin coats. If you do too thick of a coat, it won't dry properly. It'll be kind of gummy, which can affect how the foils lay. And a lot of times I will do two coats of the adhesive. I will just do really thin coats each time. And once I get all of 
the little areas that I want foiled covered with that adhesive. I am going to set this to the side and let it dry completely. Typically, I wait about 30 minutes. You can speed up the drying process with the heat gun on a low setting. We don't want to use our heat gun on a hot setting, just a low one. And I'm just going in with a tiny brush for the smaller areas, just so I'm sure that I don't get any of this adhesive on the ribbon. So now this foil adhesive has dried completely. We are ready to foil our present. I love this foil. I think that it's from Artistic Painting Studio. It may be from Southern Bell Glitter. I will have to check the actual website to see where I got it from. And then I will link it below for y'all. So to apply the foil, we are just putting a sheet on the surface that we want foiled with the print side facing up. There is a clear film over the foil, I guess. So we wanna stick this to our item print side up. And then the print sticks to the foil adhesive and when I'm wrapping my present, I'm trying to lay them so the print matches up so it looks a little bit more cohesive. And I like to use my vinyl squeegee to help that foil really stick to that adhesive. And now that we have the sides done and the front, we're going to work on the smaller sections. And y'all can kind of see how I am attaching this kind of in a larger sheet and I'm just folding it over all of the little pieces. And then I am making slits in the foil so that I can fold it over easier. so we can get that foil in the little crevices. Then we're going to peel it off. And the cool thing about foils is if you miss a little part that didn't get any adhesive on it, you can just add a little bit more adhesive and then restick your foil. So we're doing the same thing to the opposite side. And I did notice that I got a little bit of foil on my ribbon. So I'm just going to go back and repaint that with acrylic. So making sure we get all of our little parts. So now I'm just going to touch up that little part on the ribbon. I may have accidentally gotten some foil adhesive on that ribbon. So we're just gonna distress it a little more. 
And after I get my foil on my gift, you guys can see that I am going back and I am distressing where the foil meets the ribbon again. This will also help kind of break up the present and give it more dimension. So I'm just going to do this over the entire gift box. And when we are done distressing, we're going to set this to the side and then we're going to start working on our tumbler. So here is our tumbler. We're using a 20 ounce skinny from Hog. I'm using my cup cradle from Cami Page Boutique and we're drawing a straight line down the cup. This will help ensure that our vinyl is going to be straight. So I'm just going to trim off a little piece of this backing. I already trimmed my vinyl to the size that I wanted it. So we're just going to lay it on here, wrap it around, make sure everything looks straight. And then we're just going to roll down the vinyl as we're removing the backing. And I really wasn't too sure what I wanted to do with this cut, but I know for sure that I wanted this sweater vinyl on it. So I'm just trimming off this excess. I'm just kind of trimming right along the knit edge and I'm kind of like wiggling the scissors to give it a bumpy edge to kind of mimic the look of the knit. Because again, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this yet. So we're going to get our edging tool also from Cami Page. This gives us a nice clean edge of our vinyl. So how cute is that going to look y'all? So I set this to the side for a long time before I finally decided what I wanted to do with it. And I landed on making a V split with a little cow, <laughs> of course, because cows are everything. So I just taped off a V and the size that I wanted it. I wanted this one a little larger because I wanted my cow to be pretty big and I wanted it to look pretty proportional. So I did measure a little bit this time. This is one of the few times y'all will see me actually break out my tape measure. And this is why y'all see me adjust it like 50 times to make sure it's correct. All right, now we have it done, I think. <laughs> Probably not. Look, I'm taking them off again because I decided that I wanted them larger. I wanted a bigger V so I could add a bigger cow. Look, I took it off again. This is how crazy I am, y'all. Could you imagine if all of my tutorials were lives? I would never get anything done. I would be on live for five hours like Rachel and get half a cup glittered. Hey, Rachel. Maybe this time we'll get it. <laughs> Feel like Jeopardy. I almost want to edit this part out, but then again, I always like to show y'all how 
things I do are not perfect. Sometimes it takes me a hundred tries just to get something done that I want. And I knew that I was not going to use this little cow. I was going to print one and make it larger, but I was just kind of using him for reference. So now we are going to glitter the V-split section. I'm using Artistry's glitter glue. It is life. I use it for everything. I get the same great coverage as if I were using the epoxy method. Then we're going to sprinkle on our glitter. This is Mimosa 2.0, I think. And as soon as you sprinkle that glitter on, we are going to peel off that tape because we don't want that tape to dry and stick to the glitter and not peel off correctly. So we're going to let this dry. I epoxied this two times, sanded it really well, and now it's time to decal. So I just created this in Illustrator. I do have this file up on my site. If anybody wants the file to create their own decal, And I used my cow print vinyl to cut out the word Mary because I thought that cow print would go super cute. And I'm just using a champagne -y gold vinyl for the country Christmas and then a red glitter vinyl for the outline. So I know that I want this text right above the gift box. I just put that gift box on there to know where I needed to place it. So I'm just kind of making sure that the words are even. We're gonna have the same amount of space on the left and right side. And once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to smooth everything down and peel off the transfer tape. So cute. So next, what I'm going to do is apply my cow. I just took one of my cow designs, made him larger, and then cut him out of printable vinyl because I did not have vinyl for my actual machine. <laughs> so I will link the clip art set that I use down below in case anybody else wants to purchase the entire clip art set and create their own cow. So I just set him on the V-split and now I'm going to trim off his little legs that don't fit within that V-split. So I kind of wanted it to look like he was just popping out of this little area. And then I'm going to get some glitter snow and we're going to make it look like he's sitting in a snow drift. I had some little tiny hairs that were not cooperating with me. So I'm am going to leave his little puff ball on his hat. I don't want to trim that. So I'm going to go ahead and outline this with my pinstripes. I'm just going with a classic black and gold. If you guys did not know, I do have a pinstripe file up on the drunkflamingo.com. It has all of my most popular sizes, which are 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.03. And I will typically cut out full sheets of each color. So I will have a full sheet, multiple sizes of black, gold, champagne, white, all of the ones I use most often. That way I always have pinstripes in different colors in case I want to layer them. So now we are going to get a skinnier gold pinstripe and we are going to layer this right on top.
and I am just trimming around this snowball and I would rather trim around it than lay this little puffball snowball on top of the vinyl because sometimes you can see the vinyl underneath the printable vinyl. So we're just trimming that. So once our pinstripes are on, I am going to take some tape and I am going to cover these pinstripes so that the glitter snow will not get on the pinstripes and we can peel it off and it will have a nice clean line. So again, with the glitter snow, I clearly need to buy some more. I know I keep saying that. So I'm just applying this with a little brush. And I'm just kind of applying it underneath his feet. So it kind of looks like he's stepping in snow. And then I am also adding some glitter snow to his hat and the little puff ball just to give it a little bit more texture. And be aware that if you guys are using the glitter snow, it will add texture to your tumbler. So this area is not going to be 100% smooth. And I started to try to add snow around him, like snow was falling, and I decided that I did not like it at all. Nope, not going to work out. So I just got some alcohol and wiped off that section. <laughs> just was not happy with it. So here is our little guy. I love him so much. He's super cute. So also I decided to go back with my leafing pen. This is my rose gold leafing pen and I am just kind of accenting some of these parts. And we are going to attach this with E6000. And I am just kind of going right around the edges and then the little ribbons. And I am just barely putting any adhesive on here. This is just to hold it to the tumbler until we can get it epoxied. So now we're just placing this on our tumbler. I'm just kind of making sure that it is centered with the text and with this side of the tumbler. I'm just kind of holding it on there. So once that E6000 has dried, we can go ahead and epoxy. I am just using a paintbrush especially since this has ribbons it would be really difficult to try to get your finger in those little ribbons pretty much impossible so paintbrushes help out a lot i typically use paintbrushes from the dollar tree to do this i do clean them out with acetone once i'm done with them so that you can continue to use the same brush multiple times so I just made sure that I got in all of the little cracks and crevices, just making sure everything is completely covered. And for items like this, I do find that brushes are easier to use than silicone tools. And once I think that I have everything coated with epoxy, 
I will turn my turner on and then I will apply epoxy to the rest of the tumbler. And I will apply two additional layers of epoxy over the gift box because remember we already have two layers of epoxy on the tumbler from when we glittered. So we're going to end up with four total layers of epoxy, which is plenty of protection. That tumbler charm is not going anywhere. I will add that if you are doing a tumbler charm, you do have to keep in mind that those are plastic. So if you use a torch, you do want to be sparing and work quick. We don't want to hold that torch on that plastic for too long. It could melt and we don't want that happening after all that time we just spent on this cup. So I'm just kind of removing any globs of epoxy that I see. We don't want like pulled epoxy gathering air bubbles. And after this layer of epoxy has cured, then your tumbler will be complete. I will have some pictures to show you guys. I absolutely love how this tumbler turned out. It is so cute. I love the little cow. If y'all decide to try a tumbler like this or have used this tumbler charm, please post it in my groups because I love to see what you guys come up with and what things inspire you. I just think these are so cute. And if you don't have any tumbler charms, I highly suggest you go check them out. Brooke just released several Valentine theme charms that you need to get your hands on. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Also, don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group, my Drunk Flamingo Glitter Group, or my Damn Fancy Tribe. All are linked in the description. Thanks for watching!